Radio Show. I want to thank everyone for tuning in today to the 25th Hour Radio Show here on Monster Radio, AM 1150. I am your host, Rob Fairless, and on the phone with me today is multi-platinum selling guitarist from Buck Cherry and currently Josh Todd in the conflict, Stevie D. Stevie, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to join me on the show. Thank you, Rob Fairless. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, no problem. Uh, so, Stevie, man, I'm going to start off the show in traditional fashion here and get a little background information about you for the listeners out there. Uh, going back in time, what was it about music that inspired you enough to want to create it yourself? And what was it about the guitar that you chose it as your outlet in doing so? Oh, gosh. Okay, we're going back quite a few years, but uh, I don't know. I my, my dad used to take me to shows, you know, probably like a lot of, you know, young budding rock guitar players but i uh at one point he took me to santana and um there was something going on where he was sharing this feeling with the crowd and people were really into it and and he was just sharing a good just sharing good vibes and then i and then i as i got older i would go to shows on my own and um i I would i would just get that same feeling um you know, watching guys like Randy Rhodes or, you know, and, and anyone, you know, Angus Young, somebody like that. But uh, there, there comes a time when you 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 kind of cross over into uh, doing it and then doing it for a living, and then you you notice that that feeling that you used to get as a kid, you get to share as an adult, and uh, there's nothing like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you there. I mean, did you know from the very beginning that rock music was your calling? I mean, was there ever phases, especially, you know, as a kid, as to what type of guitarist you wanted to be? I mean, because I'm sure you like all types of music, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I was, I was but my brother was a jazz and, and blues player, and uh, I, I knew I couldn't do that. There was a lot more school involved in that. But, uh, yeah, rock was uh, the, the avenue that I had to go. Uh, I, where I felt most comfortable, you know what I mean? You know, I mean, there's so. one thing to be able to play a guitar, and there's another to be able to perform and entertain people uh, with your guitar. Yeah. Did you ever go through yeah. a period of, like, stage fright when you performed in front of people, or did you always have that personality of where you thrived in those types of situations? I, you know, I, I, early on, I, I was t- terrified, you know what I mean? I, my mom used to, go, you know, we... She would, I would, she would have, have me do these kind of recitals, and I, I want you to play. I grew up in this Filipino house where my mom always wanted me to play for, you know, the party, and uh, I, I fucking hated it, you know. And uh, and every time company would come over, Steve play Stairway to Heaven, <laughs> and uh, and I and I hated it, but you know, and and even public speaking, you know, I I I, I can't stand that. But something changes when I put a guitar on, you know, something changes when I play Buck Cherry songs, you know what I mean? So, yeah. And you know, thank you for mentioning the conflicts, by the way. Yeah. It's really cool. You no, know, no doubt. I mean, we're going to talk about that here in a second, but you know, you spoke yeah. about playing Buck Cherry songs. How did you end yeah. up with, uh, uh, with the gig of playing with Buck Cherry? Were you singled out for that or was there an audition process? Uh, uh, well, I mean, it's kind of a long story, but if you got a minute, I can tell you. <laughs> Uh, uh, I was roommates with Josh in the early nineties and, uh, we used to, uh, you know, that was way back. Uh, we used to drink together and get in trouble together. And, uh, and then fast forward, maybe, I don't know, almost 20 years later, um, I, we, I had gone through uh, a, a few record deals of my own. I was a hired gun. And uh, I think around my third, my third or fourth one, I called Josh and I, I was like, dude, I lost another record deal. And he was like, you know what? I need a tour manager out here on the road. Why don't you meet me in San Antonio? So I meet him in San Antonio and fast forward a little bit more. I end up being the guitar player in his solo band. That ends up uh, ending. And uh, six months later, I'm out in the desert washing RVs and jet skis, and 
I get a call from uh, Keith Nelson saying, hey, man, we're going to put the band back together for a show at the Key Club. And uh, that, this is after some time had gone by and Josh and Keith were talking after taking a hiatus. And uh, so we get to a rehearsal room. We started actually working on new songs. And I remember uh, vividly uh, Keith saying, all right, let's, uh, let's make a go of this. If you want to be in the band, bring your rent money on Tuesday. So that's how it all started. So, so right when you joined the band, or soon afterwards anyway, is when you yeah. guys started seeing some really, really good commercial success with the music. Was it a shock to you being how relatively new the band's lineup was at that time as how soon well, the success came? I mean, it, 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 I don't know. I, you know, it's, it's funny because it, it, it's, the way you make, you make it sound is like it was overnight. Yeah. And in my experience, it was, you know, every record label had passed twice on us telling us we were too old, we were not, you know, we were damaged goods, uh, the music's not in fashion right now. Like, there was a lot of pop punk and metal at the time, and here comes a rock and roll band, you know. So, uh, you know, we just, we just stuck to, we, we just stopped, stuck to our guns, and, uh, and we were killing it. I mean, we were hung, I mean, there was, we were a fucking gang at that point. And, and there was no stopping us. And, and we just kept doing what we did. And the scene kind of t- turned to us. You know what I mean? Now, did that happen overnight? It didn't, it didn't feel like it happened as quick as you, 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 you say it did. But yeah. uh, there, was, there was a lot of hard work in there. And, you know, we spoke about Josh Todd and the conflict here. We're fast forwarding to today. Uh, that's yeah. the new project you're in right now. Now, yes, sir. What's the sound like there? Is it similar to the Buck Cherry sound? Or are we talking something totally different here? Um, I mean, it's probably related. It's me and Josh, you know, so you're going to have both of those elements in both bands. But it's, it's a heavier band. Um, it's it's more rooted in punk rock and heavier music than, let's say, Buck Cherry is or was. Um, we wrote songs. J- Josh came up uh, in an Orange County punk, skate punk. You know what I mean. So the 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 music is more hardcore in that fashion. You know what I mean. Now I know online about a month ago anyway. You guys were really hardcore into recording. Do you guys have a new album yeah. out or, or coming out pretty soon? We do. Uh, we should, we're expecting a, a early fall release. Uh, it's literally get, getting mastered right now. We, uh, we worked with Eric Kretz from Stone Temple Pilots and uh, uh, a gentleman named Ryan Williams. He's uh, the engineer and mixer. Uh, he, uh, for the geeks out there, he's uh, Brendan O'Brien's right-hand man. So uh, we, we put these songs together. Uh, we've got a drummer named Sean Winchester. Uh, he's from, he's played with everybody from Everclear to, uh, guys from no FX, a, a local band here called strung out. And then Greg cash from a, a band, uh, named Dorothy. Now, are you so, guys working on like a, a film to supplement the album or are you doing videos for the, for the music? Well, well, it's suggested to us to, I mean, in today's day and age, um, a lot of social media, it's important to, to couple that with uh, your band. So it's suggested to us to always uh, grab video and, and photos and all that kind of stuff. We have people that do it for us as well. Um, for for our, our Japanese deal, uh, they couple the CD. It's actually a DVD CD. So a lot of that stuff that we post on our social media is actually the stuff that's going on our DVD in, in Japan. Now, do you enjoy the uh, Facebook application, the live uh, Facebook application? <laughs> I mean, you do it a lot. I mean, and you guys are really, yeah. it's really fun to watch you guys when you do that. You know, it's funny. A lot of people, we started doing it because Josh and I were just simply bored on the road. And um, we started doing these little videos like watching, fishing, because a lot of people ask us, what do you guys do while you're on the road? And uh, And it's... Not as exciting as it, you know, a lot of people think. I mean, we literally go fishing or go to the fucking mall and do nothing, you know, and waste money. But I, I thought it'd be funny to, you know, capture 
you know, a lot of what makes Josh great and what makes Josh great is a lot of the things that drive us crazy and the, the 22 other hours of the day. So I, I figured that what I do is I capture that on video and show everyone else. And it, it got a great reaction. You know what I mean? So why not just carry that over into Periscope and Facebook and all that? People seem to get a kick out of it. You know? Yeah, man. You know, speaking of your online presence there, uh, both Buck Cherry and Josh Todd and the conflict have their own websites. And I know you guys had, was a part of Spray Gun War. Now, are you still doing Spray Gun War? Or is that kind of on the on the side right now? Yeah, Spray Gun War is was no, it's not it's not going anymore. That's really what Spray Gun War has turned into. Josh Todd and the Conflict, okay. even though you know it, it's it, different music entirely as well. You know that was more electronic based. Um, that was stuff that we were creating, literally in hotel rooms in the back of the bus. Uh, my uh, I have a studio at home. And that was just uh, us and a laptop. Well, I know that on the Spray Gun War website, which is, you know, it's still up online. You guys sold a lot of merchandise okay. on there, you know, as far as the T-shirts yeah. and stuff like that. Are you going to be doing this yes, with, the, with the conflict? Yeah, we're, it's uh, full force. Uh, like, like I said, the, the big push will happen uh, early fall. So you'll see an album, merch, uh, everything. Maybe even a DVD, you know. Yeah, I mean, who who has the final say on, like, when you put out T-shirts and stuff like that for the band? I mean, uh, do you have control over that, or is that, you know, uh, out of your hands? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, uh, this stuff, absolutely, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot, it, it, it seemed like uh, the bigger we were, there was so much going on that the machine was running itself. So um, I remember, you know, just being somewhere and, uh, seeing T-shirts I had never seen before, or music in places that I wasn't uh, aware that uh, it would be, be being played. I remember uh, we have a song called "Sorry," and um, people would be telling me, "Yeah, my my kids listen to that on this thing called Kids Bop," and I had no idea it went over there to be turned into a kids song. You know? Yeah. So. But the conflict, you know, Josh Todd and the conflict were very hands-on. It's very DIY, you know. Yeah, you know, speaking of the artwork, man, I know you have a love for, for your tattoos, man. How many tattoos you have right now? Uh, one big one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. No, I, what, what, was no, your, what was your very first tattoo? Uh, my first one, you know, it was, it's probably uh, number 14 on the flash wall over at Hollywood Tattoo. And I, I, I remember going to Hollywood Tattoo when I first got there, and I just picked something off the wall. Just so you could get that first tattoo out of the way, right? Yeah, you know. I mean, that's what the cool kids were doing. Oh, yeah. So. All right, all right. So outside of music, man, what do you do on your free time uh, just to get away from it all? Do you have any hobbies? I know you get into photography, what? right? Yeah. Uh, I was shooting a lot, and I was shooting a lot of editorial until um, they were asking for me to do it in the style that uh, – I didn't like to do, you know, it wasn't like I needed the gig. I had a, I had a day job already, you know what I mean? So, um, so I, I stopped doing that. I'm shooting a lot less these days because, um, I took on the, uh, the, the uh, I was co-writing songs and producing songs for Josh and conflict. So, um, but yeah, the photography, I'm, I'm a dad now. So, uh, that's been taking up a lot of my time too. Yeah, man. It yeah. seems like you're 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 a um, you're a rocker, man. Right? There's a there's a certain stereotype that goes around through and through. Yeah, through and through for better or for worse. Yeah, but you but, you, but I mean? you're also a family man as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, there, there's more to life than than uh, you know your guitar. Yeah, of course, man. You know um, I mean? Now, do you do uh, other types of social media besides Facebook, or is that your go-to social media for all the people out there uh, listening? Instagram, Twitter, you know, and you can follow us on all, you know, Josh Todd and the Conflict on all three of those. So Twitter, you, Instagram, yeah. Yeah, man, so do you have any tour dates set for this year or any other projects you're working on besides the new album uh, for Josh Todd and the Conflict? Yeah, do we, what's the next date for Josh Todd and the Conflict? Uh, sometime in May, I just don't have it on right uh, we, we have date. We have some dates in May and June, uh, you know what? Just go to joshtodtheconflict.com or Josh Todd. Uh, Josh Todd. 
joshtoggott.com and all the tour dates are there. Merch info, album info, it's all there. Well, man, I don't want to keep you on the phone any longer. I know you got more important things to do besides talk to me, man. Um, no, no worries. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, was that Josh Appreciate you was talking to just now? Yes, it was. That was Josh Todd himself. You want to say hi? Yeah, man. All right, hang on one second. What's up? Hey, what's up, Mr. Josh Todd? How you doing, brother? I'm good. Just driving here. Well, that's cool, man. I just wanted to give you a shout-out, man, and... and uh, uh, Wish you the best of luck with the new album, you and Stevie and all the guys in the band. Um, I'm a really big fan. So oh, it's really yeah. cool to talk to you. You're going to really like the record. It's sick. We yeah. put a lot of lot of passion and love into it, and it really paid off. You're going to dig it. I bet I will, man. I can't wait to hear it. Thanks for the quick cameo appearance on the show. Uh, I'm not going to keep you guys on here any longer, man. You guys take care. All right, buddy. Take care.